Greetings and welcome back everyone to Pillars of Eternity, where we have recently co uh, collected, <laughs> like Pokemons, just catching all of them. We've got a new companion, a wizard by the seams of it, in fact. Let's uh, check them out. Alof, a second level wizard, oh fantastic, a wood elf. Um, Adir, he's gentry. Might of 12, constitution of 10. Intelligence 16, wow, okay, you're more intelligent my, than my character. Uh, leather armor. Effective effects, Aloth Leather Armor, what, times 1.1 1 .1 ability area of effect. Oh, okay, that's pretty impressive, so it's magic in some way. Distant advantage, plus 5 accuracy, deflection, reflect, reflex against distant enemies. He's got 7 in law, wow, okay. Level 3 scrolls. Uh, mechanics 1, Arcane Assault, Dazzling Lights, Distant Advantage, Fan of These probably are all spells, I imagine. Let's uh, have a quick yes. look at you. Arcane Assault. Unleashes a bolt of magical energy from the Grimoire that inflicts raw damage and dazes targets in the area. We've got four spells. Overwhelms anyone in the area of effect with a brilliant and bewildering pyrotechnic display, decreasing their will and leaving them dazed. We've got Fan of Flames. Creates a cone of fire in front of the caster, causing burn damage to anyone in the area of effect. Kalakoth's Sunless Grasp. The caster's hands become so cold as to freeze what they touch. Does freezing damage to a target and reduces its accuracy. And Minoletta's uh, Minor Missiles. Summons three spell missiles. Okay, that's pretty cool. And edit the Grimoire. Wizards double. Combat only. Not in Grimoire. Creates a duplicate of the caster to distract enemies, granting the caster a high deflection bonus against a single attack. Hmm... No, I'm actually happy with these. Okay. Wizards have the ability to learn a staggering number of spells, but they are always limited by the capacity of the grimoires. At any given time, a grimoire may only contain four spells of each level. Click on the spells in the right pa panel to move it and uh, add spells to empty slots by clicking on the spells in the left panel. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, do you have anything interesting on you? It does not appear so, except your magical armor. Do you have a cloak? Ah, you've not got a magical cloak. Haha, -ha, let me uh, fix that for you. There we go. You now have a magical cloak. Fantastic. Yes? Right then, I think... Is this the edge of the map? Oh, well, in that case, let's, uh, let's poke going. around. There is something over there that we can... Oh, there's loads of things we can look at. Okay, let's uh, grab a couple of them. What's this say? The Black Hound Inn. Hmm? I shall. Let's have a peek. The windows are clouded with the haze of accumulated smoke and cooking grease. Hmm? Uh, okay, well, I think it's time for us to go in. Oh, there's probably no point in us being stealthed. Oh, I like that window. That's very nice. Villager, villager, let's have a chat. Wish we had some minstrels in here. Well, yeah, I can sing a song or two, though I don't think you'll like many of them. Thought this place was going under after the owner left, but it's held out. Yes? How did it hold out without the owner? The floorboards are sticky with spills that no one has bothered to clean. Hmm. I shall. It's not so great. There's the dwarf. And Pasca. Let's go chat with Pasca. Hmm? Let's have a look at this first. Some kind of brown slop is congealing in these dishes. It smells burnt. Uh, okay. Is that your doing, Pasca? Hello, and welcome to the... The innkeeper looks up. Oh, it's you! Tenfrith told us what you did for him. It's such a relief to have him back. I can't thank you enough. Consider yourself a favourite of the house. Discounts on drinks, rooms. Tenfrith said he wanted to whip up something nice for you. He's already back to work in the kitchen, she laughs. So what would you like? Oh, this is fantastic. We're heroes of the town. I could use some reliable help. Do you know of anyone looking for work? I'd like to know more about the Black Hound. Could I see what you have for sale? Um, let's have a look at what you have for sale first. I'm sure you'll find something to your liking. We have the finest cook in Deerwood. Ooh, camping supplies. Do we have many camping supplies? Pets. Oh, <laughs> We can go to room. We can recruit adventurers. Now, from what I understand, now this is really interesting. Um, I can manage my party. Oh, actually, I'll get to this in a moment. From what I understand, at an inn, you can 
you've got a, a maximum of five companions. That is, you can have six people in your party, including yourself. Now, you can have NPCs, which you can find around the world, or you can recruit party members from an inn. You just flat-out recruit adventurers like yourself. They don't have any specific interaction or special story or anything like that, like that, like the NPCs have. However, you when you recruit them, you just go to the character creation, so you make a brand new character in the same way that you would uh, you made your own character, and then you recruit them. Possibly really good. I'm thinking of favouring NPCs exclusively, and that also means that I'm not going to just pad out my ranks with random adventurers until such a time as I've got a full party of NPCs. Maybe there aren't that many NPCs, I don't know. But uh, I think it's pretty interesting, though, especially for later runs. If you were going to do a specific run through the game after you completed it once, yeah, just fill out your your party roster with... um, Adventurers, and you can have a very, very finely tuned party at that point. From the party management screen, you can see what your allies are up to and when they aren't in the party. Uh, up to when they aren't in the party. If you assign them to adventures, you can see how long it will take for them. To- we can assign them to adventures? Oh, this sounds fantastic! Recalling a companion or adventurer from a mission before it is complete will forfeit all the potential rewards for that assignment. This sounds fantastic! Maybe I should have a huge party of adventurers. Just send them out across the land doing good deeds. Um, store. Well, this is the store. Let's get rid of that. Can I sell a bunch of useless stuff? Really? Oh, I suppose that's fair. We don't need these. We've got plenty of medium shield rounds. Um, we do not need this many hatchets, I fancy. Let's get rid of those. Uh, I like the small shield. We'll keep that. Um, get rid of that. Uh, actually, no, we'll keep one of them. Uh, did that go back to one of my party? Oh. You know what, we'll just let that be traded. Uh, we don't need all of these. Almost certainly don't. We'll keep the battle axe, though. We really don't need this many daggers, and almost certainly don't need this many bows. I'll keep two daggers. Well, yeah, I'll keep two daggers. And one bow. There we go. Right. We want some things. We can afford two camping supplies and that's it. We can afford quite a lot of these. Uh, Max endurance for 600 seconds. An odorous crumbly wedge of trees. Perfect for luring rats and dinner guests alike. Grain. Max endurance. Oh, right. of hearty meal. I imagine you can make... A uh, meal with these sorts of things. Ooh. Okay, we've got some nice pies. Savory pie. Plus 10 max endurance, plus 1 might, plus 1 perception for 150 seconds. Pearlwood chicken. 10 max endurance, plus 2 constitution. Ixamitil rice pan. Darkest rawatai cook- cookies. Plus 2 constitution, 1 perception, 5 max health. They all look awesome. Rao Thai sweet pie. Uh, yes, I think I'll purchase some of these. We'll take... Uh, well, actually, if we buy any, we're not going to be able to afford that many uh, camping supplies. We'll take one. I've got 188, but I'm not going to use any of my own money for this. We'll take some savoury pies as well. Take two of them. And we'll take a pearl with chicken. You know, because... Uh, actually, no, we need something to wash it down with. We'll take some ale. There we go. It's good enough for me. There we are. Not bad. Now, we could go for a room. Oh, man, expensive. Inns allow characters to rest without using camping supplies. Cheap rooms are usually available, but if you have cop to spend, you may consider the more expensive options. The bonuses they provide last for a long time and in fe- affect the entire party. Deerwood's Pride, plus two resolve. How long does it last for? Um, Maybe until the next rest, but 83 copper. I could afford it, but I'd rather not for now. Let's just just rest to restore my health and everything. Ah, oh, I'm liking these little uh, resting screens. 
But I noticed we got a double bed. I hope they didn't expect us to both, you know, sleep in a double bed. It's like, hmm, this is awkward. I mean, I wouldn't have anything against it, but we weren't just met. As he was restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed with suffocating anxiety. You open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of Gilded Vale's gallows tree, the creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman, whose face has shriveled inwards like mouldering fruit. Her hands hang limply to one side. You look at her. She looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly, her head snaps up and her eyes open, and they are empty, and behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts, and with a gust of rancid air, she speaks a word. Watcher. You jolt awake, the foul smell of the dwarf woman's breath still perme uh, permeating your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face in thick droplets, and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. Though it fills you with a new, queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm she is truly dead. Oh. Okay, find the dwarf woman from the dream. That's a little bit, uh... Wow. Okay, well, I'm going to go back and talk to our dwarvish friend back here. Hello, dwarfish friend. Ooh. Oh, so many things. But I'm here to talk. No, hold, hold still. But to speak. Ah, it's you, my saviour. He makes a sweeping gesture to indicate the kitchen around you. It's so good to be back. Do not think I will let this go unrewarded. I have decided that you have earned the rest, the right to learn one of my most closely guarded secrets, my dearest recipe. After this, you will eat nothing else. A savoury pie to keep you hale and hearty. May it serve you well in your travels. Have I just learned a, a recipe? I've learned a recipe. How wondrous. Crafting. Ooh, can I? Oh, wow. Ye gads, I can make loads of things. Apparently, I can make I can make this. Empowers the target with a natural speed, increasing their movement rate. That's quite cool. Wizard double. Creates a d I can make that? Seems rather bizarre that I already know how to make them. Unless it's because of my uh, party member. Can make a fan of flames. It could be. But they're just that good with law that they they can make all of these things. Food. Stew. We can make this. Plus 10 max endurance, 1 dexterity, 1 perception for 150 seconds. Oh man, I bought all of that stuff and I could have just made it myself. Scallywags. Should have bought the grain and some beer. I already had the meat. Duck's own beef loaf. Beef loaf is standard dish all across the deer wood, and hundreds of families have been using the same recipe for generations. My lord, really? No innovation? Ah, oh, this is terrible. Well, that is interesting. I will be checking that out later. Let's give you some food. And you have these. Also, can I... Sh oh, what? Did I just move them around? What? Did they go in here? Please tell me they went in here. Oh, scallywag. Did I just drink them? Aha, phew. Okay. Um, I'll d take this as well. Apparently I can eat these, can I? Oh yeah, I can. There we go. And you can have the beers. Oh, there's probably going to be a way for me to split the stack control maybe no uh, okay well we'll just have to live with that I'm, I'm sure I'll check out the keys and find out how to split stacks I will name a dish in your honor fantastic I approve nice oops that's not what I meant to do spoons hang by the fire coated in brownish gunk oh no oh that would be stealing very well I'm not going to steal from him. I'm not a scallywag. Yes. You might have been thinking, ho-ho, oh, I was going to be stealing everything yes. that's not nailed I down. Shall. Well, you would be wrong. However, this is not stealing. This is just me collecting. You can have that, and this can go in there. 
Let's uh, make sure that's stacked properly. Okay. Hello, villagers. Wish we had some minstrels in here. Uh, is that all you're going to say? Hello, little one. Beg pardon, sir. Don't have much time for talking. Hi. Oh, fair course, enough. That's, that's fair enough. I, I understand. <laughs> it makes me sad, but I understand. And you were quite polite, after all. Oh, this place was going under after... Uh, really? Is that all you're going to say? Indeed. Okay, it looks like the uh, villagers yes, have nothing worthwhile saying. Ooh. Two characters that were created by backers. Ho ho! Potion of Wizards double. Um, yeah, I'll take that. How uh, let's head over here. Hmm? Hello. Oh, again? As you're near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this woman's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to you. Reach out for the soul. You see a woman emptying her satchel onto her bed, taking stock of her inventory. Potions, bandages, tinctures, and herbs are scattered throughout the, her, the room ha haphazardly. She bites her lip, head tilted to one side, considering. She begins to repack, one item after the other, careful deliberation undercut by shaking hands. Each item has a clearly marked place, but no matter how she repacks it, she isn't satisfied. The shaking worsens, and she empties it out once more, one hand held to her mouth. Tears eek from her eyes as she gives up all semblance of order and shoves everything she can into the satchel, grabbing it and running out of the, of the bare house. Straightening her back, she walks to the docks, chin high, eyes hard and red. A gangly young elf offers his condolences, but she can't see him for the ocean ahead of her. She wanders the docks, offering her services as a doctor to any who will listen, anyone heading out on high tides. Less than an hour later, she watches her childhood disappear in the distance, a tiny speck of an island, and tries not to jump. Oh, that's so sad. How about you? As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this man's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to you. You see a group of young men standing around a makeshift practice target. This man's hands in the, stands in the middle of them, explaining the construction and the use of a bow. He holds it up, pointing out each part as he speaks about it and what it does. He then walks away from the target, telling them to remain where they are, and takes his place about 200 feet away. He carefully lines up his shot, explaining what he is doing as he does, and lets the arrow fly. It hits the target dead centre, much to the surprise and delight of the boys near it. He smiles, walking towards the boys, taking, talking about the proper stance and how to most effectively hold a bow. A noise comes from the tree line near the practice venue, and he stops, scanning the woods. Blue eyes squinting against the sun, a shadow moves, making its way through the forest behind them. He draws an arrow and lines up a shot, carefully tracking the motion of the hidden creature. Loosing the bow, he wastes no time and quickly grabs another. The boys spin, watching the arrow fly into the forest, immediately lost amongst the trees. There is a sudden explosive movement in the undergrowth as a deer erupts from the tree line, running across the edge of the clearing. The boys laugh, turning to joke with the man about, to, uh, about his lively shot. They stop talking, seeing him holding the bow and leading the deer with a knocked arrow. They drop to the ground as he loses his, loses his last arrow, which flies true and strikes the deer right behind its shoulder, piercing the heart and lungs and dropping it dead almost instantly. The boys stare at the deer for a few seconds and then slowly turn to look at the man, newfound respect in their eyes. He smiles again and breathes a quiet sigh of relief. Oh, that's actually quite cool. I wonder if those were all written by uh, mm -hmm. the backers. I imagine they were. Let's head upstairs. Find out what we can find. I was expecting that story to go elsewhere. I was expecting it not to have been the deer that he was aiming for. Uh, Caruso. Aye? I'm here. How may I help? Did you just say I? Mm -hmm. How may I help? Mm -hmm. I? Hmm. I'm here. Okay. Grab a drink, friend. Not much else of worth in this town. Says the woman from Thien. Hey, we said we wouldn't mention Thien. Ha! You're right, she does get rosy-cheeked. Ho, ho, ho. Roaches scatter and flee under the crates. I mean, yeah, that's not good. Wow, more of them, really? Ah, I'm not sure I've got enough time to chat about all of that. Let's have a yes? chat with this inn guest. That's clearly meant not to be a... Well, three mechanics, I guess. 
Please, leave me be. I'm full to sickness with what I've ha I've seen this place and its people. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Ooh. Ten years of dawn. Right-click for details. Ten years I tilled the vorless leaf. Ten, ten years I told myself that living in St. Wyden's footsteps would... Uh, Wade Wen's footsteps would bring my rebirth. Each dawn I'd pray that if thou art in darkness, he shall bring thee light. And he, each yet... Mm, that's their own fault, not mine. For once, I didn't read it wrong. Each night would bring the same emptiness. For my decades of living as a simple dye farmer, all I have shown for it is a great deal of purple clothing. <laughs> Eothas has not spoken to us since he appeared at St. Wydwin's. It was my hope that Eothas would claim me as his next vessel. But alas, the child of light remained silent. Every day I practice the ritual of banishing the shadows of the unfaithful, and every day I work my fields in solitude without a sign of Eothas returning. If thou art in darkness, he shall bring thee light. But how long must I remain lost in this long night of ab abandonment? Is this my punishment for keeping my faith in secret? Is Eothas hiding from me until I shout my reverence for all to hear? Surely he must know that the Direwoods now hate him and his followers. My countrymen are quick to blame all that was terrible about the saints' war on those of us still faithful to Eothas. Should they not be angry at the red uh, Reed Sarah soldiers? Do the Direwoods not realise that to dismiss the god of rebirth and redemption is to prevent all hope of healing? As I pen these words, I know that I must continue to till the dye leaf. I will awake each day with hope. If thou art in darkness, he shall bring me light. Each day I will pray that the dawn stars visit me, just as they visited St. Wydwen in his fields of Vorlas. Will they come to me as they have came to St. Wydwen? As a man and two women, luminescent and perfect, I am told they come to presage new times. I am told many things, and I struggle to find the faith to believe it all. And yet... Each morning the sun rises in this eastern sky, and each morning Eothas illuminates my simple plot of land, casting away the shadows of the unfaithful. In his golden gaze I thank thee, Eothas, for all the springs I've had, and all that will come. I am in darkness. Please bring me light. I wonder if they wrote that book. I'm going to leave it there. I don't want to be carrying that around with me. I'm here. We're going to continue to explore. I'm not going to chat with you guys. Not yet. Oh, that is a huge bed. My God, that would like... What, what do they have in a bed like that? Trolls? Uh, yeah, I'll we can unlock that. No time. Uh, ooh, a fancy hat. A duelist's hat. Hats come in many different shapes and sizes and a wide array of colours. Deerwoods are known for their modest, rustic hats, while Valians are associated with broad-brimmed hats featuring a variety of exotic plumes. I like it. We will take it. Uh, well, actually, we'll put those in the stash, and you can have that. And my wizard is going to wear a fancy hat. I feel it is necessary. There you go. You are now a fancy hat-wearing wizard. Don't worry, you can thank me later. Mm -hmm. What else do we have in here? Crammed behind the books is a drawing that shows Eothas and Lord Redrick in a comp what compromising <laughs> position. Ooh, uh. Uh, the Deerwood, Part One: Early Colonial History. Uh, we'll take all of these. I'm going to take this with me, and I'll read it off camera. And if it's got anything interesting in it, I'll read it aloud, or maybe I'll just read it next episode. But I'm not going to. Oh my God, there's three of them. I'm not going to spend too much more time in this episode just reading things. A black hound. These bones are covered in tiny bite marks. Hello. This hound stares intently at the covered window, head cocked as if it's waiting to hear a particular sound. It looks up when you approach and whines a low note, tail wagging slightly. Pat the dog, of course. The dog's tail thumps happily against the floorboards. Can I open this? He's probably waiting for his master's return. I can't believe you had an option. I'm going to pet him again. I'm not going to use, leave the dog alone. My goodness. What kind of monster would just leave the dog there? 
Okay, we're going to be heading back out. I want to go and check on that tree. And probably in the next episode, we'll uh, come back and check on those uh, three backers in there and actually uh, check out what they have to say. Did you hear the bells? Bad news, I think. Yes, unfortunately I did. And then I told her, that's not the pistol. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I can see where that's going. Uh, okay, moving on. <laughs> I like the random stuff the things people say, but uh, it does seem that most of them, when you actually talk to them, it's not so good. Poor Arufa is so worried about her child. I don't blame her. Tatanu's one of the best smiths in the Deerwood, but his stock's been lousy lately. Okay. Well, there's more stuff for me to explore, but let's go to this tree. I feel it is important. You look so fantastic with that wide-brimmed hat with the feather. Ooh. Okay. Hello. Were you looking for someone in that tree? That I could introduce you. Uh. Strange way to talk about your dad. He looks up the tree and breathes out. Half the town's up there now. Seems like no right way to talk about it. Uh, that's a fair point. I'm looking for someone who can help me feel better. He gives an understanding nod and takes a long drag from his pipe. My condolences. He exhales and turns his attention away, watching the village around him. You seem like an interesting fellow, but I need to uh, check on this. Caldara de Baranzi. The squat, distended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked bow that sags at the tug of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth-eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lolls forward rigidly from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on its surroundings, but there is a tepid warmth to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Hmm. Well, I fancy this is why we're here, so reach out for the women. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spre uh, sp spreading out towards the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you have expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing, electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman. And when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in milky fog, her body still swaying in a wind that you no longer feel from the tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, uh, it is both, I think. Yes? Yeah, actually, I'm fairly certain that's a pretty pretty good uh, evaluation of the situation. Am I imagining this? No. I don't think my chanter would think this was an imagination. He'd be too willing to believe it. How are you able to speak to me? I need to understand something that happened to me. I think I survived a beerwick. Do you know what? why that would be? I want to know something about you. Well, we're going to choose this, because uh, being a chanter, I'm, I'm sure he has... That might make him willing to believe this sort of thing, but he would still not understand it. Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. <laughs> I like you, old dead dwarf woman. I need to understand something that's happened to me. She nods, a look of pity on her face, as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there. She nods. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, 
and the watcher you will stay. Okay, so watcher was what I am when you said that. Okay. And what is a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, though. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair. And here we are, visiting you and I. And it reminds me of better times. Yeah, when you weren't dead, I imagine. Souls pass on. Some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it. Sometimes more than they were before. But usually less and seldom the same. For all souls there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on. And those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. But I take it I have now remembered. But why? A watcher sees though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. Oh. See memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder. So that's what we're probably seeing with the uh, backer characters. Is We're seeing past memories, not the memories of that particular character. But uh, uh, previous incarnations. What did you mean, when all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. She smiles at you reassuring, reassuringly, fanning out a tuft of long whiskers that sprouts from one of her cheeks. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond Kadnua. Black oh, okay. Meadow. He will welcome the company. Right, oh. Um, I think I survived a beer wick. Do you know what? Uh, why that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Okay. Called, I mean. Called them. Those days are all behind me now. Oh, I'm so sorry. I wish I could do something for you. Uh, you said souls break apart over time. Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. Try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. Hmm. This is so interesting. A very small few resist Rimargan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. She clicks her tongue. Well, all does tend towards entropy, I suppose, but uh, I want to know something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. Oh, I doubt it. This is quite charming. Who are you? And here I thought you'd come to visit me in particular. Well, I, I mean, Cantare yes, I have. De Baranzi, of the Valian Royal Academy of Animantic Sciences. Not the greatest of their number, but I came here all the same because this was where help was needed. I just didn't know your name, that's all. I didn't mean to make it sound like I hadn't come here specifically to talk to you. What happened to you, exactly? She laughs, a rasping, choked cackle escaping between rows of buttery yellow teeth, causing her body to bob up and down with each spasm. Seeing your blank expression, she catches herself. <laughs> oh, come! 
come now, such a question. As though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling. Allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer. <laughs> well, I... I clearly could see that you got hung, but I meant what happened. Ah, oh, never mind. Well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radrick for a pittance. A humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife. See why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. Studied her for months. Looked high and low for impurities. Tested her valence, the permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? Nothing? Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman, too. Meek, but warm-hearted. A few months' time, and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. Oh, yes, my lord. She is riddled with imbalances. I must have time to cure her. As the birth drew near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. Well, it's a rather unfortunate way to end, but what exactly is an anamancer? A student of the soul. Something so basic, yet so poorly understood. But so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are... Well, there are charlatans in every science. But the best of us? The best? Inspirations. Miracle workers. My parents were soul twins. Miserable before they met. Empty inside. It was an animancer who helped one find the other. Turn their lives around. An interesting concept. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. Hmm. It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? No, oh, okay, uh, slightly unethical. Alien republics for many things, but their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. Well, <laughs> you might still be alive if you'd stayed, but I think that's all we're going to ask, and in fact, all we've got time for. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Kaldara closes her eyes and her head slumps forward over the noose, and your surroundings seem to bleed into your vision from some unknown place of waiting. Aloth looks at you through narrowed eyes. Are you all right? You seemed lost just now. Hmm. This happens a lot. You'll have to get used to it. I'm just going to say that because I'm suspecting it's going to happen a lot. It hasn't happened a lot yet. He folds his arms. That's good to know, but I don't suppose you could tell me what that was, or uh, what that was all about. Uh, it, it does, I don't suppose I've got a choice. I'm a watcher. His arch eyebrows recede into his hood. Well, that's interesting. He gives you a sly grin. And I expect that explains how you survived the Beowick, hmm? In any case, I appreciate your honesty. Since we're travelling together, I'll probably wise for us to share these things. Do you know anything about the watchers? Only that they're rare and they seem to have unique insights into certain soul conditions. He coughs, as you just demonstrated. Let's continue on. Right, well, that was a rather large reveal for the character. And truly an awesome character to talk to. I loved her accent. But uh, that's going to be it for this episode. It's drawn on a little bit longer than it should have. But uh, in the next episode we're going to be first taking our levels with both of our new characters uh rather both of our characters and then moving on probably uh, finding out where next we have to go in our quest i do hope you've liked this episode and i hope you'll be joining me for the next but until then and as always do take care